So, uh, hello everyone. I'm going to talk about brain. Uh, let me start with uh, Richard Feynman's um, note. Uh, so, Richard Feynman is a theoretical physicist, and he once noted uh, that discovering physical laws uh, is very much like uh, observing how two players are playing chess. So, you observe uh, how two players are playing, and you try to come up with the rules of the game. So if you don't know the game, uh, you first notice that, for example, a uh, bishop uh, always stay, they always stay on the same color. Uh, then you observe more, and the next step, uh, you see that uh, bishops, they can move diagonally. And you see, you can say, okay, this does not contradict my previous statement, and moreover, it supports it. Because if it moves diagonally, uh, the chessboard is colored uh, so that it always stays on the same color. So, uh, absolutely the same I tried to do with brain. Well, it's a big challenge. Uh, nobody knows how the memory works. Uh, but my goal was to come up with some new uh, computational model uh, which is closer to artificial intelligence. Now, for this reason, I spent a lot of time uh, learning medical neuroscience. I tried to understand how brain works. I tried to find uh, the rules of the brain. I, I tried to find out how the brain might work. Actually, I was uh, most curious about memory. And my idea is... Uh, so. Okay, my idea will answer these questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we will find out uh, how do we remember new information? How do we get used to some frequent events? Uh, when do we feel pain? Uh, when do we feel pleasure? Which music do we like? Why do we need to sleep every day? Alzheimer's and other diseases. And how can we use this knowledge to learn new things? Well, uh, for example, you all like music when it's played live, right? Uh, I'll try to explain why you like this music and why you don't like music which is generated by computers. So, uh, first I have to uh, give some details about the brain, actually about the uh, nervous system. Uh, the nervous system is divided into two parts. It's gray matter and wi white matter. So here on the left side, uh, you can see the neuron. This is a single neuron. And if you put these neurons together, so here, you see. So if, if you put these neurons together, you get layers. These layers are gray matter, where you see the cell, cell body uh, dendrites. Uh, so this is input and output zone. And white matter. White matter uh, contains only axon. So it's here. This is the axon. And um, some fluid, some something I don't know. I'm not a medical scientist. Uh, and <clears throat> my idea is that axon is responsible for memory. At least it's, it is responsible for local memory. Uh, so this part. Uh, White matter is usually ignored. Every, everybody thinks that gray matter, gray matter is responsible for memory, for reasoning, for processing information, for everything. My idea is that white matter plays at least the same role in memory. Uh, <clears throat> so this is my painting and <laughs> paintbrush. I'm sorry for this. Uh, so here, here you can see this is a single uh, axon here. And what surrounds axons is uh, glial cells. Uh, so glial cells, uh, they help us uh, in... So they feed neurons. Uh, they uh, keep the axons, uh, the axons stable in stable conditions. They keep the same temperature. Uh, they keep the, bal the pH balance and things like this. So they play a really important role in uh, neurons life. Uh, so here on the picture you can see the stages. This is the sta first stage, which is idle. Uh, the second stage 
when the neuron is activated. This means that, for example, you can touch something and your receptors, this, these are also neurons, the receptors, they uh, accept some, they receive a signal and now your neurons are activated. So when they are activated, uh, these glial cells and, and the other liquid which, is, which surrounds axons, it moves. Uh, it moves just a little bit because of vibration of, of the axon. And on the next stage, when uh, the neuron is not activated anymore, you can see that glial cells, they did not return completely to the same position. So there is some pattern left here. So you can see this pattern here. This pattern is still left there. And next time, uh, if the same signal comes up, if the same signal is input, uh, the, the axon, it uh, it uh, makes the same deformation and it fits this pattern, okay? So if you repeat this many, many times, then this pattern will be very clear and next time you receive the same signal, you even do not touch the glial cells. So this is the idea. So next time you don't touch the glial cells and this signal is ignored. Uh, so if you're getting used to something, uh, even locally, so for example, if you uh, hurt your finger all the time, the same way with a needle, for example. So you uh, press it with a needle to the same, same point every time. At some point, you get used to it. It's not the brain which really takes care about, of ignoring this signal anymore. It's your finger which is used to it. It's, it's, uh, so your nervous system it's, is used to this signal locally. Uh, so, <clears throat> my painting is not good. So, my paintbrush experience <laughs> was even worse, so I decided to paint with pencil. Uh, so, here, uh, here's a, another idea. Uh, it's, not, not, it's not another idea, it's the same idea, actually. So, here, you can see, so, here are the layers. The gray, gray, gray matter, white matter, gray matter, white matter, and so on. And, so, first you see this normal uh, state of the of the axon. Uh, next, when it's activated, so the normal state is not uh, straight. Okay, these axons they are not straight. So, but they're used to its pattern. Next time, when you activate uh, this neuron by some signal, it tries uh, to move differently, and in the end, uh, you have another length of the axon. So the, well, the length of the axon is unchanged, but you straighten the axon, you straighten the neuron, okay? And then uh, when you release it, it comes back to the normal, normal length, uh, but now you have, uh, you have the pattern, patterns left in white matter. So, and if you are getting used to this uh, signal, then this a part, this new type of signal, uh, this part is skipped because uh, axon is now uh, following the pattern and it's the length of the pattern, the projection, is the same. So it's, it's, not, it's not longer at least. Uh, that's why it doesn't give the signal to, it doesn't pass the signal to the next neuron. So if there is a new signal and your neuron is activated, then it becomes longer and it passes the signal to the next neuron and till the brain, so until the brain is activated. Okay, so then, then you feel it. And uh, so, okay. Uh, another thing is blood pressure. Blood, so blood veins, they also are going through this white matter. And when the blood pressure is different from what you used to, white matter here, so this dark thing is the white matter. So white matter is uh, changing its properties, okay? So if the uh, blood pressure is different, then uh, at least the pressure, of the pressure of the white matter is different. So it, it loses its properties. It cannot uh, check the patterns anymore. It, it cannot remember things anymore. If you have a high blood pressure, then this white matter is closer to the axon. 
and you feel pain much more. If your blood pressure is very low, then it's far from the axon, and you ignore almost every signal. Uh, so, the pain. Uh, if we return to, to my first picture, <clears throat> every time the white matter is moved, deformed, we feel pain. Uh, this is why uh, studying hurts. You learn new things, and it's very difficult for you. It's very difficult for your nervous system because uh, your brain is really transformed. It's really changed. Every second, you're an, a new human. Okay, so it's now you're a different man. If you learn something new, you become a different man. So you change. Of course, it hurts. That's that's why it's hard to study. Okay, when, uh, when do we feel pleasure then? We feel pleasure when the glial cells are barely touched uh, and not, but not moved. So if the axon is uh, deformed on this, the same way, so that it touches the pattern, but it doesn't move it, it doesn't deform it, but touches. Then we feel pleasure. Uh, for example, with uh, music, if you get used to some music, if you listen to this music many, many times, you start liking it. Because this is uh, how your patterns look like now. They really change the way that you now like the music. Uh, with Live music, it's even more different. Uh, it's with live music, when you play guitar or piano, it doesn't matter, uh, you cannot play precisely. Anyway, uh, it will be a little bit different. It can be different by milliseconds, microseconds, but it's different. Every time it's different, so it, your accents really touch the pattern. They touch the white matter, but doesn't move it, so you enjoy it much more. Because if you listen to the music, uh, to recorded music, then it gets used to it, and your neurons, they don't touch white matter at all. So you stop enjoying this music. But if you, if you listen to it live, then you like it again. So the musicians are used, so the music, musicians are used to only precise tones. They, are, they only work with precise tones. Uh, they only know people who are also musicians they always listen to very precise music. And if something goes wrong, if someone um, plays music wrong, it really hurts to musicians. Uh, for musicians, it's really terrible to hear something, uh, someone playing wrong music, okay? So, why do we need to sleep? Every time the accent touches the white matter, it moves, it changes the white matter. So, during the day, your white matter is like uh, mixed. So, so, so throughout the day, it's mixed always. It looks like, so here is the mixer. And when you uh, mix the milk, for example, uh, it changes its pressure. Okay, So we have to stabilize our white matter. We have to calm down. We have to stabilize. We have to return back the properties of the white matter. Then we can uh, learn something new. We can use the patterns we have learned and things like this. But if we do not sleep, the white matter is almost destroyed. So you really feel a lot of pain. You cannot uh, continue, so you cannot go on anymore. And you have to sleep, you have to calm down. You have to uh, restore the properties of the white matter. When you sleep, if some new signals uh, are input, then so these new signals, if they don't match your pattern, you wake up immediately. For example, if you fell asleep uh, during the loud music, uh, then loud music uh, is not a problem for you, you can sleep. But if you change the music or if you stop the music, your brain is already used to this music. If you stop the music, uh, you would wake up immediately. You would understand that something is wrong here. So, um, and dreams. Uh, during uh, sleep, the white matter restores its properties and uh, it moves a little bit. Of course, if it restores the properties, it moves. 
So it now, now the white mirror touches the axons. These axons may send signals to some other axons, um, neurons, and so on. So, but this process uh, goes really uh, randomly. It's accidental. Pro uh, it's an accidental process. That's why you, you do not see any logical dreams. Everything is unlogical. If you wake up and you remember your dream, then you say, "How could I come up with these ideas at all?" Uh, so, <coughs> uh, these ideas are supported by uh, many things. I was uh, looking in the internet. I was uh, reading a lot of uh, papers about diseases, uh, about uh, facts on uh, the brain and things like this, and they are supported mostly by these uh, diseases like Alzheimer, or so I cannot pronounce them correctly. <laughs> this uh, periventricular leukomalacia, it's motor, motor control problems or other development uh, delays. Uh, or dementia, it's uh, when your brain declines thinking. Uh, it, it's about 2010 probably, uh, it's very recently. Uh, medical scientists, they have shown that during these diseases, it's the white matter which is destroyed usually. Only white matter is corrupted, but not the gray matter. Gray matter is also corrupt but mostly white matter. And this was a really recent research, and it, was, it really supported my idea too. So I believe that even if uh, <coughs> these neurons, maybe they do not vibrate, maybe they do not leave any patterns, but at least uh, there is an electrical signal in this neuron, and it generates a magnetic field, and this magnetic field moves the white matter. It, it changes the structure of white matter. Anyway, there is some pattern which is left by this neuron uh, when you receive a new signal. So if you want to learn something new, you have to repeat it over and over again. Your neurons, your brain has to uh, build these patterns for you. If you want to build these patterns in your brain, if you want to get used to it, you have to repeat it many, many times. It will hurt you. You don't maybe you understand it, you don't like it, you understand that you don't like studying, it hurts you. But if you study a lot, then uh, there is no pain anymore, and you remember everything. So this white matter, it has uh, very clear patterns, uh, and it will be hard to destroy these patterns later. That's why you have to repeat it many, many times, and then you can learn anything. So if you want to learn mathematics, just do mathematics a lot. If you want to learn programming, just practice a lot. You write programs. At some point, you will see that it's very easy to write programs. It's not a problem for you anymore. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>